Nevertheless, uh, now this principle, the principle including in Article uh, 6, Paragraph 1, are now, according to the Lisbon Treaty, the values um, included in Article 2. If we look at the, this article, if we read this article, we found a two list of values. And so there is an asymmetry um, the, between the values indicated as well as the competence held by the EU to legislate on the subject, subject and to ensure the, their application and protection. In fact, Article 13 of the Treaty uh, on the European Union states that the Union shall have an institutional framework which shall aim to promote its values, but there aren't a precise provision that set up a mechanism for the protection of these values, except for the much discussed Article 7. Uh, furthermore, the compliance with these values is an essential condition for acceding states Nevertheless, the practice of the uh, annual report that are published by the Commission during the negotiation period show that Commission failed to assess many of the values that are set in Article 2, uh, such as pluralism, tolerance, solidarity, non-discrimination. If the respect uh, and the promotion of these fundamental values are so little considered when state enters the Union, this will, will also happen after. Uh, the, after the treaty of Nice, uh, the debate was focused on the institutional and decision-making apparatus of the Union because of the awareness uh, of a deficit of representation and democratic participation of citizens in European political life. Uh, the Treaty of Lisbon simply reproduced the same provision of the Constitutional Treaty of Rome, modifying its systematic and the methodological approach, and introduced the Title II on democratic principle from Article 9 uh, on the principle of equality of EU citizens to Article uh, 12 that expressly codified the active contribution of the national parliament to the good functioning of the union. Um, according to Article 10, the functioning of the union is based on, is founded on the representative democracy. Citizens are directly represented at the union level in the European uh, um, Parliament. Uh, evidently, uh, this does not happen uh, in the European Council and the Council, but they are democratically accountable uh, before their national parliament and the citizens. Uh, mm. uh, this article, in a certain way, uh, is the expression of the multi-representativeness in the EU, uh, because translate the different interests coexisting in the Union, always according to Article uh, 13. And is also a um, principle that is in line with the principle of national democracy that the same Court of Justice recognizes. Uh, Article 10 also explains in the paragraph 3 states in paragraph three that every citizen shall have the right to participate in democratic life of the union. Decision shall be taken as openly and as closely as possible to the citizen. The wording of the article would seem to refer to a kind of right of access to decision making process recognized to uh, citizen in compliance with the principle of transparency and subsidiarity as a kind of of communicative democracy in the sense of giving more space and strengthening the tools for forming public opinion according to the provision of Article 11. In the first section, um, uh, these, uh, some of these instruments that I put in this slide was already mentioned, for example, the communication with the civil and the dialogue with the civil society, but I would like to include also the exchange of information and collaboration between national and EU institution. And so uh, this is a part of Article 11 that um, included broad consultation, exchange of opinion, and so on. But Article 11 included also, or introduced the European Citizen Initiative, that is the initiative of inviting the European Commission within the framework of its power to submit any appropriate proposal 
on a matter where citizens, no less than one million citizens, who are nationals of a significant number 